Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video we are going to see about dislocation of shoulder. The shoulder joint is the most common joint to dislocate. It is more common in adults when compared to children. Anterior dislocation is the most common type of shoulder dislocation. This picture shows the normal anatomy of the shoulder joint. This picture shows a dislocated shoulder. Now let us see about the classification of shoulder dislocation. Shoulder dislocation can be divided into anterior dislocation, posterior dislocation and inferior dislocation. In anterior dislocation, the head of the humerus comes out of glenoid cavity and lies anteriorly. It can further be subdivided into preglenoid dislocation, subcoracoid dislocation and subclavicular dislocation. In preglenoid dislocation, the head lies in front of glenoid. In subcoracoid dislocation, the head lies below coracoid process. It is the most common type of shoulder dislocation. In subclavicular dislocation, the head lies below clavicle. In posterior dislocation, the head comes to lie posteriorly behind the glenoid. In inferior dislocation, the head comes to lie in the subclenoid position. It is a very rare type of shoulder dislocation. Now let us see about the mechanism of shoulder dislocation. Fall on an outstretched hand with the shoulder abducted and externally rotated is the most common cause of anterior shoulder dislocation. Anterior shoulder dislocation can also occur due to direct force pushing the head out of the glenoid cavity. Posterior dislocation can occur when there is a direct blow on the front of the shoulder. Electric shock and convulsions can also lead to posterior dislocation. Now let us see about the pathological changes seen in shoulder dislocation. Bankard's lesion is when there is stripping of the glenoidal labrum. Hillsack's lesion is when there is depression on the humeral lid. In shoulder dislocation, there can also be rounding off of the anterior glenoid rim in chronic cases. Some of the injuries associated with shoulder dislocation are fracture of greater tuberosity and rotator cuff tear. Now let us see about the presenting complaints of shoulder dislocation. The patient presents to casualty with the shoulder abducted and the elbow supported with the opposite hand. He gives a history of fall on an outstretched hand. There will be pain and inability to move the shoulder. Sometimes the patient gives history of similar episodes in the past. On examination, the arm is abducted. The normal round contour of the shoulder joint is lost and it is flattened. There will be fullness below the clavicle due to the displaced head. Some of the signs seen in shoulder dislocation are Dugas test and Hamilton ruler test. In Dugas test, the patient will be unable to touch the opposite shoulder. In Hamilton ruler test, due to the flattening of the shoulder, a ruler can be placed on the lateral side of the arm such that it touches the acromion and lateral condyle of the humerus simultaneously. For diagnosis, we can use X-ray. Anteroposterior view of the shoulder is used for confirmation of dislocation of shoulder. This picture shows a normal X-ray of the shoulder joint. This picture shows a dislocated shoulder joint. How do you treat a case of shoulder dislocation? A reduction under sedation or general anesthesia is the treatment of choice. In caucus maneuver, we do the following. Traction, external rotation, adduction and internal rotation. Hippocrates maneuver can also be used for reduction of dislocation of shoulder joint. Reduction under sedation or general anesthesia should be followed by immobilization of the shoulder in a chest arm bandage for 3 weeks. This should be followed by shoulder exercises. Um, an important complication of shoulder dislocation is injury to the axillary nerve. This can be managed conservatively. Now let us see about recurrent dislocation of shoulder joint. Some of the causes for recurrent dislocation are anatomically unstable joint, for example,
patients with Marfan syndrome, inadequate healing after the first dislocation, and epileptic patient. How do you manage a case of recurrent dislocation of shoulder joint? If the recurrent dislocation is problematic, the patient can undergo the following surgeries. Putiplet operation, Bancard's operation, and Bristow's operation. In Putiplet operation, we do double breasting of the subscapularis tendon to prevent dislocation of shoulder. In Bancard's operation, the glenoid labrum and capsule are reattached to the front of the glenoid rim to prevent dislocation. This can be done arthroscopically also. If you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comment section. For more such videos, please check out my playlists. Thank you.